all right students let's go ahead and start our class today today we'll be going ahead and starting with accounts and records listen accounts and records as a chapter till your november exam was not applicable for the exam only means it is a new chapter which the ici has now included in the syllabus of ca intermediate for ca inter earlier this chapter was not there are we clear everyone so if you are writing your exam in may if you are writing an exam in november 24 may 24 november 24 basically may 24 onwards this chapter has been included for ca intermediate ca final kill it was there but ca inter they have gone ahead included now what is the chapter the chapter name is accounts and records let's go ahead and take a quick linking where does this chapter start from chapter number nine accounts and records people listen to me very carefully very very easy chapter nothing is there in the chapter we started learning gst with what everyone good sir services good sir service has to be supplied supply once goods and services supplied gst will be levied once gst gets levied gst has to be collected and paid by whom taxable person yes or no everyone how will he collect he will calculate gst gst is equal to value of supply into rate of tax once you know the value you will prepare the tax invoice credit note debit note and delivery chalan correct or not once you know the value you will collect the gst by giving what tax invoice debit note etc or might be you will issue delivery chalan credit note etc we have learned now once you have gone ahead and issued all these tax invoice credit note debit note delivery chalan and all will you tear them and throw or will you have to maintain them Government is telling tomorrow if I want to check, are you going ahead and showing your sale correctly? Are you going ahead and showing your supply correctly or not? If I want to check, I will need the document. And that document you should preserve and keep. And hence, government told all these documents you should maintain your accounts and records. It means you should do your accounting also, plus all these documents you should preserve and keep records also. Are we clear, everyone? So now we are going to learn the chapter of accounts and records in our tax invoice ka chapter we learn section number 31 32 33 and section number correct accounts and records starts with section number 35 and 36 let's go ahead and get it started accounts and record very easy section chapter actually section number 35 it says who will maintain accounts everyone tell me one thing every registered person if you are a registered person you will maintain your accounts where will you maintain shall keep shall mean mandatorily you have to keep and maintain where at his principal place of business as mentioned in the registration certificate where will you keep your accounts and records at your principal place of business clear who will keep number one registered person number two where will he keep principal place of business take it what are the detail he should keep he should keep true and correct accounts people People, you, your accounts, you would have heard true and fair. Correct, everyone? Because in accounting, you don't go ahead and see one rupee, two rupee. Materiality is not important. Materiality, you see. Not materiality is important. You don't go ahead and see about one rupee, two rupee. It is true and fair view which you take. But in accounts, you have to maintain true and correct. It is not that true and fair accounts you will maintain. No, you have to maintain true and correct accounts of what? PCOs. What is this? P CEOs. PCOs means production and manufacture of goods related accounts. If you are into manufacturing, you would have produced goods, production related accounts and manufacture related accounts you have to keep. Then inward and outward supply of goods services or both. For an example, I am a supplier of goods. What are the goods I bought inward? What are the outward supply? All the details I have to keep. Then stock. What is my opening stock? How much did I purchase? How much did I sold? How much is my balance stock? All the details I have to keep. Whatever is the ITC I have availed. I bought goods. How much credit I availed? That details I have to keep. Then output tax payable and paid. What was my output tax I collected? How much did I set off and I paid balance? What is the balance payable and how much did I pay? Such other particulars as prescribed in rule number 56. Rule number 56 there where they have gone ahead and told. We will tell some other details also which you have to maintain that is told in where everyone rule number 56 rule number 56 i will teach you little later 
can i go ahead everyone now tell me one thing who is maintain required to maintain accounts everyone registered person where will he maintain principal place of business what are the details you will maintain pcos are we all clear till here can we go ahead everyone next sir i have one principal place of business i have additional place of business at principal place to you will maintain your accounts what if you have one additional place of business relating to additional place you might have accounts where will you maintain additional place ka accounts see over here proviso is telling if you have more than one place of business in your registration certificate it means if you have a additional place of business accounts relating to each place of business at such additional place of business it means tell me one thing if i have two additional branches which are my additional place i will maintain my accounts at principal place of business correct everyone but if i have additional place of business what to do about the additional place of business ka accounts do i have to maintain it at additional place of business or i do i can maintain it at principal place only no you have to maintain if more than one place of business is then the registration certificate accounts relating to each place of business shall be maintained at such place of business it means if i have additional place of business additional place of business ka account should be maintained at additional place of business are we all clear with this can we go ahead people number 1 where will i maintain who will maintain accounts and record registered person where will he maintain principal place what will he maintain pcos if he has additional place of business additional place of business ka account will be maintained where at additional place of business is my point clear to all i'll show you one question and then we'll go ahead who is required to maintain accounts everyone who is required registered person and at which place he is required to maintain it says shall keep and maintain his books of account at principal place of business and books relating to additional place as mentioned in the registration certificate are we clear what is it telling every registered person shall keep and maintain his books of account at his principal place of business and books of accounts relating to additional place as mentioned in the registration certificate where more than one place of business is specified in the certificate of registration the accounts relating to each place of business shall be kept at such place of business what do you mean by this if i have principal place i have to keep it accounts at the principal place but if i have additional place of business what about the accounts relating to additional place i have to keep at additional place of business then the next question go to dress is a chain store dealing in ready made garment through five showroom in delhi it has a single gstn number of its showroom in delhi and has principal place of business in karol bag where will it keep accounts everyone at the principal place of business that is karol bag one of the consultant has suggested go to to maintain books of account of all the five showroom at the principal place of business for better administration and control give your comment on the above advice people additional place of business ka accounts where will you maintain at the additional place of business see over here everyone the suggestion is not correct every registered person is required to keep and maintain his books of account at principal place of business where more than one place of business is specified the accounts relating to each place of business shall be kept at such place of business so if i have additional place of business where will i keep additional place of business ka accounts in the additional place of business principal place ka principal place additional place ka at additional place next sl group has started making taxable supply you are required to advise about accounts and records to be maintained under section number 35 or mr bala a registered person wants to maintain proper accounts advise him about the accounts need to be maintained under section number 35 what what are the accounts to be maintained pcos where is it required at principal place but if you have additional place additional place mein additional place of business ka accounts are to be maintained please read this everyone <clears throat> are we all clear everyone is it telling the same thing now you see over here i have given ici study material some questions i have taken from ca final ka book why sir ca final 
you will see ca final may 18 because this chapter is a third graded chapter in ca final in ca final they hardly ask sometime one or two mark question but for intermediate they can definitely ask a three mark question ca final they don't bother this chapter because there are 40 chapters in ca final so this chapter becomes very small okay everyone this chapter becomes very small so what i have gone ahead and done is now in ca final they used to ask questions in 2018 19 etc so those questions which they can ask you now i've gone ahead and put it because for you guys it's a new chapter so from from this chapter none of the questions have come for you but in ca final they have asked so those kind of questions only they will ask you so i've given it to you here so that we can study are we clear everyone but it does not mean ca final ka question to difficult what is difficult in this question nothing can we go ahead everyone next now you will see idtc faqs are there what is idtc faq what is idtc faq indirect tax committee ca institute ka indirect tax committee is there and people ask them frequently ask question people ask them this question so whatever idtc faqs ko people ask question no from that also i have taken some question so that i can teach you this chapter because intermediate mein to this chapter never came how will you get new question can i go ahead everyone that's all now in case of more than one place of business whether records are required to be maintained only at principal place can you maintain the accounts at principal place or additional place ka accounts are to be maintained at additional place additional place of business ka accounts are to be maintained at additional place where more than one place of business is specified the accounts relating to each place of business shall be kept at such place moreover in case additional place of business the accounts relating to each place of business shall be kept at such place of business concerned such books of account shall include electronic form i'll talk about electronic form now listen i will keep books of account manually like books have you seen manual books of account yes everyone people will keep manual books of accounts also right and keep books of accounts are we clear but nowadays people keep in tally also electronically do you see everyone they will keep in tally and they will take up the backup in hard disk etc we yes don't know everyone so electronically can you maintain your accounts are you allowed there is a proviso which says see manually so you will maintain accounts and record if you want you don't want to maintain manually then you can keep and maintain accounts in electronic form in such manner as may be prescribed means they are telling we will tell you how to maintain and they have told in which rule everyone rule number 57 in rule number 57 they have told generation and maintenance of electronic record number 1 people can i maintain accounts in electronic form yes whenever i am maintaining accounts in electronic form they are telling proper backup of records shall be maintained and preserved you should take proper backup you should take proper backup for an example when lightning happened backup gone system gone accounts gone what to do so they are telling it should not be that when you are maintaining electronic record you don't keep backup you should keep what everyone backup of the record shall be maintained and preserved you should preserve and it and keep are we clear so if you are going ahead and maintaining your accounts in computer for an example you should take backup in a hard disk and you should keep the hard disk preserve and keep it it should not be that sir hard disk lost accounts lost no you can't do that can i go ahead everyone next registered person shall produce on demand records or document if the officer is telling sir i want some records which you are maintaining all the sales related bills i want it you are maintaining in electronic form means you are maintaining it in soft copy now they are going ahead and telling you when you are maintaining in soft copy etc we want will you tell them no i will not give registered person shall mandatorily produce on demand the records and document whatever records you have maintained whatever accounting you have done whatever documents you have sales ka document etc you have to give him when he is demanding on demand provide the details of such file and password etc if it demands from you any file which you have maintained soft copy may you have to give him if he is asking for password of the file you have to give him you can't say no 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 i will not give the password no no you can't do that you have to give the file which he is asking you have to go ahead and give him the password also for an example he told you i want your tally ka data for this month 
you have to give him you are telling tally ka password i will not give you can't do that you have to give him the password also are we all clear with this can i go ahead everyone now my question do you have to maintain accounts and records manually can you maintain in electronically also yes whenever you are maintaining electronically what are the things you have to take care everyone proper backup should be taken then on demand you have to on demand you have to give what whatever the records and documents you have maintained if he is going ahead and demanding you then the details of files whichever he is demanding that file also you have to give and password also you have to give him can i go ahead everyone are we all clear with this file clear with this point everyone next see everyone they are asking you not here not here not here everyone here Mr. X is of the view that records are mandatorily required to be made manually only. Are they required manually only? Accounts and records can be maintained electronically also. Only electronically also. You are required to examine the view taken by Mr. X. Is Mr. X's view correct? No. The view taken by Mr. X is not valid. Books of account, including any electronic form of data. Stored in any electronic device, books of accounts include what? Manual books also, and it includes electronic form also. Means you would have stored it in some hard disk, etc. That is also books of account. The registered person may keep and maintain such accounts and other particulars in electronic form stored in any electronic device. Might be you have stored it in a pen drive. Might be you have stored it in a hard disk. Might be you have stored it in a computer. You can maintain in electronic form. And records so maintained shall be authenticated by means of digital signature. So, for an example, I have a tail ka invoice which I generated. Now it is electronically generated, right? I will not be able to sign it manually. How do I sign? With a digital signature. You can sign it with a digital signature. So, what they are telling, whatever electronic records are there, that has to be authenticated by what means, everyone? Digital signature. The registered person maintaining electronic record shall produce on demand. Whenever demanded, you have to produce the relevant records or document duly authenticated by him in hard copy or electronically readable format. If he is asking you the data, you have to either take a printout and give hard copy or or electronically also you can provide. Then soft copy also you can provide of the data. Where the accounts and records are stored electronically by a registered person, he shall on demand provide such files, password of such file, and explanation for codes used. Might be any codes ka explanation the officer is asking. You have to give where necessary for access and any other information which is required for such access, along with sample copy in printed form of the information stored in such file. If the officer is asking you, that please take a printout and give. Then you have to take a printout of the electronic form also, and you have to give it to him. So people, tell me one thing: Can you maintain your accounts and record manually or electronically also? Electronically also, you can maintain. You can write three lines importantly and come saying, sir, whenever we are maintaining accounts and records in electronic form, proper backup should be taken and preserved. Secondly, on demand, I have to produce the records and document, and if he is demanding. Whatever files are there, I have to give him along with the passwords. That's all should be good enough. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. This was about section number 35.1. People, section number 35.1 told very simple. Number one, who should maintain records? Registered person. Where shall he maintain? Principal place of business. What shall he maintain? PCOs. Can he maintain in electronic form? No, additional place of business ka accounts. Additional place. One more exception. Proviso is there. That you can maintain accounts electronically also, but electronically when you are maintaining rule number 57 has to be followed. Are we all clear till here? Can we go ahead? Yes, sir. Yes, madam. I did is the FAQ. Baba, this line which is written over here, she is telling, sir, more or less the line looks same. It's like a repeat only. This line and the second line, no. It's like a repeat only. There's no difference, people. 
where more than one place of business is specified in the registration certificate, the accounts relating to each place of business shall be kept at such place. Moreover, in case additional place of business, the accounts relating to each place of business such shall be kept at such place of business concerned. The line is almost repeat only. It's a repeat. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next, there is no difference. It's a repeat. Everyone over here now. Section number 35 2. People, a registered person has to maintain accounts and record. Correct? Supposingly, I am not a registered person. But there are some people who are not even registered, but government wants them to maintain accounts and records. There are two people. You have to be very careful. Number one, owner operator of a godown or warehouse. What do you mean by owner operator of warehouse or godown? I have a warehouse. I have a. I am keeping people ka good. For an example, Ram told me, I want to store my goods. I will keep goods of Ram. This is whose goods? Ram's goods. Shyam told, I want to keep my goods. I am keeping Shyam ka goods also. Who am I? Who am I, everyone? I am a owner or operator of a warehouse or you can call it a go down also. Correct everyone? What do I do? I store goods for people and I will charge them some amount. Saying, sir, I am storing goods for you. I will charge them some amount. People listen to me very carefully. Government saw that is warehouse keepers who are there. No, on them government have to maintain control. Otherwise, what they will do? They will store goods of the people. For an example, Ram Kasam goods are there, which he has purchased, on which he has not paid any tax. Can he tell? I will not store in my godown. I will give it to him and store in his godown. Yes or no? Might be you have bought some goods on which you have not paid tax. Can you, if you store in your godown, might be officer can come and check because you are a registered person. What you did, you are keeping in my godown. I am a person who keeps everyone's goods. Don't you think the chances of tax evasion is too much here? What people will do? Their tax and paid goods, they will keep in some other go down. So, government is selling. We have to maintain control on these people. Are we clear, everyone? Government wants them to keep accounts and records. So, if they are registered person, people, if they are a registered person, they have a GSTN number. And they will maintain the accounts and records. But if they are unregistered, if they are unregistered, then also government told, hey, you have to submit ENR01. And you have to obtain a unique enrollment number. Unique enrollment number. And then you have to maintain your accounts and record. People, how do I take enrollment? You have to go to. You have to go to eWay Bilka website. I'll show you over here. And here. Just a minute. Here, registration, you will be able to see enrollment. Can you guys see as per section number 35 two, you can take enrollment. Are you able to see? Here, if you are a warehouse keeper, if you are a go down keeper or you are a cold storage, cold storage means go downs which have refrigeration facility where people will keep like ice creams, etc. So that it does not melt and then transporter. Then you can take what everyone? enrollment if you are enrolled government will give you one number that this is your enrollment number now government will make, make control on you government will tell you have to maintain accounts and records why do you have to maintain accounts and record because government knows that people will keep goods in your go down whose tax might not be paid and that is why government is selling whom owner operator of go down or warehouse if you are registered or unregistered, you shall keep and maintain records of the consigner, consignee, and other relevant details as told in rule number 58. I'll teach you about rule number 58. Number two, they are telling accounts and records are to be kept by whom? Transporter. People tell me one thing. I have a truck. I am doing transportation for people. Don't you think I can transport those goods also on which tax is not paid? You told, hey Ramesh, this goods pay tra tax is not paid. Can you transport from here to there? So government understood that these people also can do wrong things. And that is why government told a hey, transporter, 
you also have to take what everyone enrollment if you are registered then no problem i already know you but if you are not registered you should enroll under gst enrollment does not mean you will become registered person but government will know that you are a person who is a transporter and government will tell you to maintain accounts and records are we clear everyone now can you tell me who are the two people unregistered also has to maintain accounts and record owner or operator who is owning or operating a godown or a warehouse number 2 transporter if they are they shall maintain records of consignor consignee and other relevant records transporter for whom he is transporting to whom he is transporting consignor and consignee details he has to maintain now they are telling you have to maintain details as told in rule number 58 rule number 58 says if your owner operator of warehouse or your transporter if you are registered person then no problem if your turnover is more than 20 lakh you will be registered if you are registered you will already maintain accounts and records because registered person has to maintain but if you are unregistered then you have to take you have to go online and file the form gst nr01 and you have to obtain a unique enrollment number now rule number 58 may it is told what are the accounts to be maintained by a transporter what are the accounts to be maintained by a owner operator of warehouse let's understand transporter people tell me one thing transporter you know what transporters do they will take the goods from you and they will take the goods for the person you want to transport so for whom did you transport the goods till where did you take the goods might be sometime what happened this transporter went from supposingly karnataka he went to Karna from karnataka to up and from up he is going to assam so might be in up he, he reached up in up he unloaded the goods in the godown this transporters also have what everyone godown where they will keep the goods for some time then might be one truck is going from here transporter ka another truck is going so it will load the goods in another truck and it will send for an example i wanted to send my goods from karnataka to delhi first it went from karnataka to up up me it kept the goods for some time then it kept put the put the goods in another truck and it took it from here to delhi can it happen everyone might be this truck was going till up so it sent the goods till up from up another truck is going so another truck mate will go so will it also store your goods for some time this is known as goods stored in transit when they were taking the goods from karnataka to delhi will they also store the goods for some time yes so what government is telling over here you are a transporter you should maintain records of goods which are transported delivered stored what did you transport which goods did you deliver which goods did you store in transit did you store some goods in transit on the way then along with the gstn number of registered consignor and consignee means is consignor ka registration number and consignee ka registration number saying sir for this guy i transported till here i transported this was the supplier gstn this was the buyer recipient ka gstn number this goods i transported from here to here for this person this goods i transported from here to here for this person all the records you have to maintain because government wants to know for whom did you transport the goods from here to here for an example one officer came and saw and you are telling ramesh ke liye i transported the goods from here to delhi in my books of accounts i am not showing sale only government will catch my neck and say hey, your transporter is telling that he has transported the goods for you why why didn't you show your sale are you guys able to understand that is why government is telling what everyone transporter should maintain records of what goods which he has transported delivered stored in transit along with the gstn number of the registered consignor and consignee for each of their branches for an example i am a transporter i have two branches one in karnataka one in delhi i should maintain for this gstn number this goods i transport this goods gstn number i transported this goods for this gstn number i transported this goods i have to maintain for karnataka branch also for delhi branch also for delhi branch if i am transporting the goods then this gstn number ke liye this many goods i transported this gstn number ke liye this many goods i transported all the accounts have to be maintained by whom transporter are we clear everyone can we go ahead we were louder next 
if you are a owner operator of warehouse i am keeping goods in my godown what records i have to maintain whose goods i am keeping when did the goods come when did the goods go how many days the goods remain in my godown i have to say sir on 1st of january for mr ram 1st of january i received 10000 unit then again on 10th of january he sent 10000 unit then uh, from 15th of january 15000 units went and remaining how much i have as on 15th of january sir i had 5000 unit like this you have to maintain the accounts and records for whom for every person whose books of accounts you are maintaining to everyone books of account you have to maintain with respect to the period for which the goods remain in the warehouse including particulars of dispatch movement receipt disposal of the goods sir how many goods were there how many goods came how many goods went from my godown how many goods are remaining all the details you have to maintain so if i am a owner operator of warehouse how many goods came to my godown how many gets went how many are remaining with me all the details i have to maintain and you know what i have to maintain owner wise that for ram this many goods are there with me for sham his 10 units came again 10 units came 20 units went again 10 units came remaining with me is 10 units like this you have to maintain for everyone they sell store goods in such manner that they can be identified item wise and owner wise i have to maintain the accounts how do i maintain everyone item wise and owner wise for an example i am maintaining the accounts for sharat in my godown sharat ka goods are there so i should be able to say for sharat this is his goods these are his bottles which are there these are the glasses which are there these are the mobile phones which are there item wise i should be able to say these are the items which belongs to sharat these are the item belongs to sharat i should be able to say if i am keeping the goods in my godown are we all clear to all clear can we go ahead everyone next so it is telling see item wise owner wise so i should be able to say owner owner number ram ram ka these are one item this is another item and this is another item why to facilitate physical verification and inspection by the proper officer if officer comes to your go down and says which goods belongs to sharat you should be able to say sir these are the sarat ka goods this is his bottles which he bought these are the mobile phones which he is selling these are the computers he is selling a uh, owner wise item wise i should maintain the accounts are we clear everyone can we go ahead people my question to all of you <clears throat> is an unregistered person required to maintain accounts which unregistered person transporter and owner operator of warehouse if he is registered then he will have gstn if he is not registered how will he maintain unique enrollment number what are the good accounts to be maintained by transporter branch wise gstn number wise that for this gstn this goods have transported you have to maintain the accounts everyone see over here records of goods transported delivered stored along with gstn number of the registered consignor and for each place of business and sir can you tell me if i am the owner operator of warehouse what will i do owner wise item wise details have to maintain are we all clear till here can i go ahead now come section number 353 section number 353 says if commissioner wants commissioner wants commissioner can tell a hey, chartered accountant you need to maintain this accounts also additional accounts can be told to be maintained if commissioner wants to tell someone that power is there with the commissioner let the power be there total bakwas this is it says notified class means commissioner can go ahead and notify commissioner can issue a notification and say from today chartered accountant you have to maintain this accounts also for an example they can say teachers you need to maintain the accounts saying what time you went out what time you came home because you are going out and teaching and we don't even come to know for teachers they told that you have to maintain accounts of your day time table also what are you doing when are you going if they tell we have to maintain but as of now nothing is told but do they have the power to tell that 
to maintain additional accounts documents for specified purpose if commissioner wants commissioner can tell sir so many accounts you have told pcos yes or no sir i don't want to maintain can commissioner give some relaxation also if commissioner wants commissioner can notify and relax some people from maintaining account saying hey you don't need to maintain this account no problem if commissioner wants commissioner can see but these two are total bakwas it is just the power with the commissioner can i go ahead everyone section number 35 5 told that if you are a registered person you if your aggregate turnover is more than 2 crore you have to get your accounts audited by a chartered accountant or cost accountant but you know what this point only got deleted in gst gst me audit was there earlier that under gst you have to get the audit done from a chartered accountant or cost accountant now that audit ka provision only deleted you are no more required to get audit done this provision was omitted by which act finance act 2021 with effect from 1st of august 2021 you are no more required to get your accounts audited then sir why did you write over here because after 3 4 if i write 6 you will tell where is 5 Are we clear, everyone? So I have written in grey, saying this is no more required. Audit is no more required by a person. If my turnover is more than two crore, do I have to get audit done now? No, no more required. Next, subject to seventeen five H. Leave seventeen five H now. I'll teach you in ITC chapter anyway. Seventeen five H. We learn in ITC chapter. Listen, where a registered person fails to account for goods, services, or both. in accordance with subsection 1 means if you don't maintain your accounts and record as told pcos the proper officer shall determine tax payable on such goods as if such goods have been supplied by such person and provision of 73 and 74 which is demand order we will talk 73 and 74 in ca final not now 73 and 74 comes in ca final demand order shall apply mutatis mutandis what do you mean by this listen same to same 73 and 74 apply people listen officer came to my premises he told ramesh sir how much stock did you have i told i bought 1000 unit he told sir did you maintain your outward supply ka detail i told no not maintain properly he saw i have only 800 stock remaining what about the 200 stock i did not maintain accounts only he will say this 200 stock 200 units no which you don't have i will assume you have sold it i will assume you have the is telling if good see where you fail to maintain accounts in accordance with subsection 1 pcos you did not maintain proper officer shall determine the tax payable on such goods as if such goods have been supplied by such person it means he will assume that you have sold the goods are we clear everyone and what are they telling he will give you a demand order saying hey this 200 units i want the gst because it is not there did you maintain accounts of stock did we tell you to maintain accounts of stock yes you bought 1000 unit today 800 is remaining where are 200 unit you are telling oh no sir i don't know where it is must be eaten by rats you tell i don't believe all this thing you did not maintain your accounts right i will assume that you have sold the goods and you have to pay the he will give you 73 and 74 talks about demand order he will give you a love letter and tell 200 goods into this much price into gst please give me the gst are we clear everyone can we go ahead the next one section number 35 is done people section number 35 may i told you section number 35 one who has to maintain accounts where does he have to maintain principal place of business what does he have to maintain pcos correct everyone then if i have additional place of business accounts relating to additional place should be maintained at additional place section number 35 then can i maintain electronic form my accounts yes but backup should be taken when he is asking you have to give files passwords etc who has to maintain accounts owner operator of warehouse or go down and transporter if they are registered they will have gstn number if they are not registered they have to take enrollment can i go ahead everyone and then i told you what accounts are to be maintained by transporter and what accounts are to be maintained by owner operator of warehouse what did we learn over here rule number 58 third and fourth and fifth i told is total bakwas 
Sixth one I taught you. What is sixth one telling? If you don't maintain accounts relating to something, and if those goods are not there with you, officer will assume that you have supplied the goods services and you have to pay the GST. He will give you a demand order, demanding the tax. Can I go ahead, everyone? This is section number 35. Now comes section number 36. Everyone over here. Period of retention of accounts. What is the period of retention of accounts? Means how much time? Whatever accounts and records you have maintained, no? How much time do you have to keep them? For an example, this year ka accounts and records I kept. After the year gets over, will I burn the accounts? Burn and throw. They are telling, you should maintain your accounts until the expiry of how many months? 72 months from due date of furnishing the annual return. Can you tell me 72 months means? How many years? 72 months means? See over here everyone. For an example, 2022-23, this year, what is the due date of annual return? By what time I should file my annual return for this year? 31st December 2000. Correct everyone? For this year, I should file my annual return by 31st December. That is the due date. Do you guys agree? Till when should I maintain the accounts? From the due date for 6 years. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Can you tell me when is 6 years getting over? 31st December 23 say. 1 year, 2 year, 3 year, 4 year, 5 year, 6 year. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. 31st December. I should maintain my accounts till what time? This year ka accounts and records. All the accounts and records till what time I will maintain? 31st December 2000. Are we all clear till here? Can we go ahead everyone? I will ask you one question. Tell me one thing. If it is 2018-19, till when should I maintain the accounts? For the year 2018-19, till when should I maintain the accounts? Do it quickly, do it everyone. Pick up the pen, do it. Louder. Okay, what is the due date of annual return? 31st December 19. Correct everyone? This year related annual return you will file by 31st December 2000. From that time how much? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. By what date? 31st December 25. I should maintain the accounts. Now, are we all clear with this? Now, it says, if registered person is party to an appeal, revision, proceeding before the appellate tribunal, ATAA or court. What is ATAA? AT means appellate tribunal. You can write over here, appellate tribunal. AA means Appellate authority. Right, Baba, right. Can we go ahead, everyone? Can we go ahead, everyone? Okay, everyone listen now. It says, okay, I'll tell you. For an example, this year, no? You sold calculators. Worth rupees 50 lakh. How much, everyone? GST rate on calculators, you charge 12%. How much is 12%? 6 lakh. 
actually the G8 or GST on calculators is 18% means how much? You should have charged 9 lakh. Everyone listen to me very carefully. And officer gave you one demand order. He told, hey Ramesh, you have to give 3 lakh rupees more. He gave you what? 3 lakh rupees more ka demand order. He told Ramesh, see, you are paid only GST how much? 6 lakh. But for this year, whatever the sale is there, actually you should pay how much? 9 lakh. But you paid only? How much more you have to pay? Now you know what? You can take this demand order and you tell, sir, I will not pay. I will go for an appeal. You can file your appeal. Appeal is a part of CA final. We'll be learning in CA final. You can go to the court. As of now, you can you can go to actually three people. Appellate authority, appellate tribunal, and you can also go to the court. As of now, I'll use the word court. For an example, you went to the court and your case is going on. Court is yet to decide whether you have to pay this 3 lakh or not. You went to the court and you are fighting. In the meanwhile, 72 months got over. The accounts relating to this year, you will burn and throw. What will you wait for? Final decision. Do you guys agree with me? For an example, the final decision came here. Final decision of the court came over here. People, are you able to understand this point? The final decision came supposingly on 1st of March 2026. When did the final decision come? And they told that you have to pay, so I will have to pay now. My question is, from here, how many years I have to maintain the accounts? One more year. That's all. So, minimum account should be maintained for 72 months or the final decision when it will come. That they say, how much time everyone? Can you tell me when is one year getting over? 1st March 2000. So, should I maintain my accounts till 31st December for this year? Should I maintain till 31st December or should I maintain till 1st of March 2027? If your party of an appeal or revision or any proceeding is going on before the appellate authority, appellate tribunal or court, your proceedings are going on, you shall maintain accounts and record. For one year after the final decision has come of the appeal revision or proceeding. As of now, you take when the final decision of the appeal has come or 72 months, whichever is later. Are we clear, everyone? My question, everyone, listen. For an example, final decision came here. Final decision came over here as on 1st of May. 2025, 26. Okay, one minute. First of May, 2025, the final decision came. Can you tell me till when shall I maintain my accounts? One minute. One year will get over when? First of May, 2026. Do you guys agree with me? First of May, 2026. My question is, should I maintain my accounts till 1st of May or should I maintain till 31st December 2029? Whichever is later. Is the point clear to all? Can I go ahead? My question over here again, everyone. For an example, the final decision came on 1st of May 2030. Final decision came over here. Till when should I maintain? 1st of May 2030. 31. Should I maintain till here or till here? 72 months got over already. But still, until the final decision comes, you should maintain. Plus, once the decision has come, you have to maintain for how much time, everyone? One year. Are we all 100% clear with this point? Sure, everyone? Listen. Read this question, everyone. Read, read, read.
Are we done, everyone? Clear? What is it telling? Mala Services is a supplier of management consultancy. It has approached you to ascertain the period for which books of accounts and records need to be maintained. Section number 36 stipulates that every registered person shall keep and maintain books of accounts for how many months? From the due date of furnishing annual return for the year, the accounts and records pertain to. However, a registered person who is party to an appeal or revision or any other proceeding before the appellate authority or revisional authority or appellate tribunal or court, whether filed by him or by the commissioner, might be appeal has been filed by you or appeal has been filed by the commissioner. We will talk about appeals in CA final. I am sorry, I am not teaching you, but it is not required now. We will have to learn about appeals, etc. in CA final. As of now, you think he gave you a demand order and you went for a challenge. To a challenge means you went to appeal. Or is under investigation for an offence. This is not required under chapter number 9. Means you went for an appeal. Then you should maintain the books of accounts and other records pertaining to the subject matter for which the appeal is going on. Or investigation up to a period of how much everyone? After the final disposal of such appeal or revision or proceeding or investigation or for the period specified above, which is how many months? Whichever is later. I don't think so. They should ask you relating to this point because it talks about appeals and all, which is a part of a CA final. But still, did you guys understand this point, everyone? You should maintain your account for how many months? But if I am the party to an appeal, then one year from the final order of the appeal or then two months, whichever is later. Chalo. Now, I told you a person should maintain what? PCOs, right everyone? Plus such other particulars. S means such other particulars as told in the rules. So, rules are telling other things also has to be maintained by you. What are the other records I should maintain everyone? Rule number 56 everyone. Please come to rule number 56. Rule number 56 one says, Every registered person shall maintain in addition to the particulars mentioned in section number 35.1. What is mentioned in 35.1? PCOs. They should maintain a true and correct accounts of goods which they have imported. People, you should maintain accounts of what? Goods imported. Goods which you have exported. What are the supplies attracting? RCM. You took some supplies and you have to pay GST under RCM. You have to maintain that. Invoice. Array invoice. You have to maintain all your invoice. Will you tear the invoice and throw or you will maintain? Who told? Rule number 56. You should maintain your bill of supply. If you are supplying with supply, exam supply or you are a composition dealer, whatever bill of supply you issue, you have to maintain. Delivery challenge you have to maintain. Credit note and debit notes you have to maintain. Receipt voucher, payment voucher, refund voucher. Do you remember everyone? All this, did I tell you in the very first instance that in accounts and record, we will be learning whatever details we should, whatever invoices, debit note, etc. We should, we should maintain the accounts and records. And that is what we are learning over here. Sir, what are the details a registered person should maintain everyone? Goods imported. Everyone with me. Goods imported. Goods exported. Supplies which you have to pay GST under RCM. Then invoices. Bill of supply, delivery challenge, debit note, credit note, receipt voucher, refund voucher, payment voucher. Clear? No, simple. Next. Every registered person except composition dealer shall maintain. People, it means composition dealer is not required this. Other than composition, you should maintain stock detail. Like opening balance of your stock. How much did you receive? How much did you supply? How much was stolen? How much was lost? How much was destroyed? How much was gifted? How much is the free sample? For an example, I purchased 1000 unit. I should maintain one statement saying, sir, opening balance is 1000. I purchased additional 100 units. Then I sold 500 units. How many units sold? 500. Then, sir, 100 units I gave as free sample. Sir, 100 units eaten by rats. 
all the details i'll have to maintain how much is the remaining unit i should have 400 units do you guys agree with me if officer came and saw and i don't have 400 units gone baba gone if supposingly i have only 300 units with me in actually how much is the difference what will he say you have supplied and he will go ahead and give me a demand order that is why they are telling you should maintain details of your stock who need not maintain this detail composition dealer it means composition dealer ke liye relaxation stock details are not required next every registered person shall maintain accounts relating to advance how much advance did you receive for supplying you would have received some advance how much advance did you pay to someone for advance you have received you have received the receipt voucher did you issue the invoice did you adjust it against an invoice adjustments all the details have to be maintained can i go ahead everyone next every registered person other than composition shall maintain accounts of tax payable including rcm how much is your liability who will maintain the accounts you have to maintain the accounts how much is your tax payable you supplied some goods you have some tax payable you bought from a person you have to pay the tax under rcm all the details have to be maintained see tax payable including tax payable under rcm then how much is the tax collected how much did you actually pay what is the input tax credit you have claimed along with that you should also maintain a register of all the tax invoices debit note credit note delivery chalans which you have issued received during any tax period all the details have to be maintained what will you do everyone number one what is it telling you should maintain what everyone details of your tax payable what do you mean by tax payable whatever i supplied on that what i what is the tax payable or it can be tax payable which is tax payable under rcm what is the tax you have collected from the customer what is the tax you have actually paid to the government after doing set off in itc claimed along with that you should maintain details of your invoices tax invoice debit note credit note delivery chalan received and issued during any tax period all the details have to be maintained by you then every registered person shall maintain details of the supplier who are your supplier who are your buyers what are your storehouse storehouse means warehouses all the details should be maintained by you can we go ahead everyone next sir i had to pass one entry uh, is, uh, writing ram account debit to sales one lakh one lakh by mistake instead of sham i wrote ram i did a wrong entry in my books of account can i erase it can i do uh, no what they are telling see if you do one wrong entry it shall not be erased efface means what that is known as efface you should not erase or you should not efface or it should not be overwritten if any incorrect entry you have done except clerical error what is clerical error addition totaling error etc is there then it is okay but other than that, might be it's a wrong entry, right? You should have written what sham account debit to sale. They are telling it shall be scored out under attestation. Matlab, you should cut it and you should sign attestation. And then means you should not delete this entry. You should not rub it this entry. You should you should only score out and you should attest. Signature of the accountant should be put there. Then they are telling thereafter. The correct entry should be recorded. Now you should record the correct entry. Sham account debit to sales 1 lakh, 1 lakh. It means wrong entry. You should not erase it. You should not erase it. In case of electronic record. Sir, electronic record may what erasing? Delete button over. They are telling if you are maintaining electronic records, a log of every entry edited or deleted should be maintained. Means if you edit this entry, no. You should maintain a log saying first I had recorded this entry, then I made this entry as this entry. You should maintain a log saying, sir, first I had recorded this entry, then this was the mistake. So we went ahead and edited the entry or we deleted the entry and we recorded a new entry. Can I go ahead, everyone? That is what they are telling. So people tell me one thing. If I'm if I record a wrong entry, wrong entry should be erased, effaced, overwritten. No. You should cut it, sign 
there and you should record a correct entry. But if electronic record, then what erasing? Delete over. But they are telling even if you delete, you should maintain a log. That first I had recorded this entry, then I went ahead and recorded this entry. Are we clear with this point? Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. One minute. People, what are the accounts not required to be maintained by composition dealer? I told you two accounts, no? Number one was which one? Stock related. Number two, tax payable related. Everyone over here now, see. Swad restaurant has opted for composition scheme in the current financial year. Discuss the records which are not to be maintained by a supplier opting for composition levy as enumerated in rule number 56. Or Mr. Sky is engaged in the business of trading in mobile. He is eligible for composition scheme as has opted for the same. He seeks your advice for records which are not required to be maintained by him as composition dealer. Number one, stock related. Correct everyone? Opening balance, purchases, whatever you supplied, how much is the closing balance, all these records are not required. Secondly, tax related. Accounts containing the tax payable, including tax payable under RCM, the tax collected and paid, input tax, input tax credit which you have claimed, along with the register of tax invoice, credit note, debit note, delivery chalan, etc. Whatever it is, you are not required to maintain if you are a composition dealer. So, what are the two things not required to be maintained by composition dealer? Please practice this question today at home. Stock detail and tax payable detail. Can I quote everyone? Tax related detail is not required and stock related detail is not required by whom? Composition dealer. Next. People, what are the books to be maintained by an agent? Who is an agent? This is the principal. I am the agent. Customer. Principal gave me the goods. I will supply the goods. Invoice issued in the name of the Am I an agent, everyone? I am a selling agent. I am selling the goods on behalf of principal. I should have an authorization, no, that I can sell the goods on behalf of principal. Yes or no? So an agent should maintain particulars of the authorization received. They should have an authorization letter received from the principal to receive the goods and supply the goods. I should have received what? Letter from the principal. Letter from the principal that I am authorized to supply on his behalf. Or you remember, we buy also and give it to him. Procuring agent. So I should have a authorization to buy the goods and give it to him also. That authorization letter should be there with me. Secondly, particulars including, I should maintain the description, value, quantity of goods received and supplied on behalf of every principal. For every boss, what are the goods I sold? What are the goods I bought and gave it to him? All details should be maintained. Then, details of accounts furnished to every principal. Did I tell you? I will keep selling, I will keep collecting, then I will make one account. Do you remember that I sold 10 goods for 1,000, 10,000 rupees, sir. Out of that, 1,000 was the expense, 2,000 is my commission, remaining 7,000 I will pay him. Do you remember everyone? This is what? Which I give to whom? This account, should I maintain or tear and throw? I should maintain. What they are telling over here? Details of account which are furnished to every principal, you should maintain. Then, tax paid on receipt of goods or service affected on behalf of every principal. People, when I have gone ahead and received the goods from him, I will pay the tax to him? Yes or no? Because he will raise the... Yes or no, everyone? What they are telling over here, tax paid on receipt. When he has sent me the goods, will I pay the GST to him? What are the goods I took from him? What is the tax paid? For an example, I bought the goods on behalf of the principal. When I buy the goods from the supplier and I give to the principal on these goods, do I have to pay the tax to the supplier? So they are telling over here, what is the tax paid on receipt of goods or service affected on behalf of every principal? For an example, okay, no, I'll explain you like this, this one. I took the goods from the principal. I sold the goods to the customer. 
do I have to pay the tax on the goods? Invoice issued in whose name? Agent. Agent's name. When I sold, will I collect the tax and pay? Yes or no? How much is the tax paid? All those details I have to maintain. Are we clear, everyone? Very important question. In the exam, they can ask you. See over here. ABC, a manufacturer, the engages Raghav and Son as an agent to sell the goods on its behalf. People, who is Raghav and Son agent? For the purpose, ABC has supplied the goods to Raghav and Son located in Haryana. He has given me the goods and I am going to supply. Enumerate the accounts required to be maintained by Raghav and Son. Number one, particulars of authorization. I should have an authorization from all the principal. For what? To supply the goods or to receive the goods on whose behalf? Number two, particulars including description, value, quantity of goods or service received on behalf of every supplier. What are the goods I received? Or what are the goods? People, if I am a selling agent, I will supply on behalf. If I am a procuring agent, I will buy on the behalf of the principal. So what are the goods I bought on behalf of principal? What are the goods I supplied? Details of accounts furnished to every principal and what is the tax paid on the receipt? People, whatever the goods I have received and I have supplied, what is the tax I have paid on those goods? All the details I have to maintain. Is this the same question everyone? Same point. Next. I am a manufacturer. What, is the, what does a manufacturer do? He does manufacturing. So Baba, when you do manufacturing, what are the goods you manufactured? What is the raw material you bought? What is the raw material you bought? What are the goods you manufactured? What was the scrap generated? What was the byproduct generated? All these things are known as what? what all these things are to be maintained by whom? See, he should maintain monthly production account showing quantitative detail. Quantitative means how much quantity of raw material you have procured. Services used might be I am a manufacturer. I told one person to come and repair my machinery. He has given me the services. What are the services I have taken? What are the goods manufactured? What is the scrap generated? What are the byproducts which are generated? All the details have to be maintained by whom? Manufacturer. I am a chartered accountant. What accounts I will maintain? Service provider. What are the services given by me? To give the service, I bought iPad. What are the goods I bought to provide the service? I bought a mobile phone. What are the goods you bought to provide the service? What are the services you took? I took printing service so that I can give you books. Correct or not everyone? What are the services taken by me? All the details have to be maintained. See? Supplier of service shall maintain what? Accounts showing quantitative details of what? Goods used in providing the service. Input services which you have taken. Services which you have supplied. People, three things. What is the services I have given? To provide the service, did I take any service? Those details. To provide the service, did I buy any goods? Those details. Are we clear everyone? Can we go ahead? Next. Who is a works contractor everyone? Who is a works contractor? For an example, I told Chirag, Chirag, can you make this building for me? You get the material, you get the labor. So Chirag is a works contractor. What are the details a works contractor will maintain? You only think, what are the different works contract I did? To do this works contract, what are the goods and service I used? What are the good services I bought? How much money I received for the works contract? All the details have to be maintained. See, books to be maintained. Number one, name and address of person on whose behalf you did the works contract. Description, quantity value of goods or service received or utilized in execution of the works contract. To do this works contract, I took labor services. I bought these goods. All details you have to maintain. Details of payment received with respect of each works contract. I did this works contract for Mr. Ram. He gave me 10 lakh rupees. Then name and address of supplier from whom he received the goods or service. I bought bricks from this person. I bought cement from this person. I took laborers from this person. All the details you have to maintain. So people, if I am a works contractor, what details I will maintain? Name and address of works contract for whom I have done. What are the goods and service I used? 
from whom did I buy the goods and service? Are we clear, everyone? What is the payment I received? All the details are to be maintained. Now, people, if you see over here, I taught you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Actually, when you see rule number 56, it has 14 sub rules. But all are not very important from exam point of view. At intermediate level, they will hardly ask a three mark question, which will come from this only. Are we clear? Along with this, let us go ahead and complete. People, you see over here. Accounts and records may. We have section number 35, 1. Rule number 57, did I teach you? Rule number 35, 2. Rule number nee, section number 35, 2. Did I teach rule number 58? 35, 3, 4, 5 is omitted. 6 I taught you. Then I taught you rule number 56. There are how many sub rule? 14 nahi baba. 18 are there. But we have to learn only how much I have told you. That much is more than enough. Remaining you can just read it once for your reading purpose. Then we have section number 36. Now let us do all the question answers and close the chapter. Which are the remaining question? Ah, here everyone. Read question number 8 everyone. Read. What is it telling? Works contract. Did I tell you just now? Next. We are already done with 9, 10. Did I tell you owner, operator of warehouse and transporter, what are the accounts to be maintained? This is your practice question today at home. You have to practice this everyone. Please write and practice. Whether the transporter who are not registered under GST are required to maintain any records. If any other unregistered person are also required to maintain records. People tell me, transporter, are they required to maintain records? What? For whom did they, the transportation? GST and wise, they have to maintain. For whom they have done the transportation? And branch wise. Can I go ahead, everyone? See here. The transporter who are not registered shall obtain a unique enrollment number on the GST portal and maintain records of what? Goods transported, delivered, goods which are stored by them along with the GSTN number of the registered consigner, consignee for each of their branches. And also, is there any other person, unregistered person who has to maintain accounts? Who? Owner, operator of warehouse. Till, till, till chain cold is operating cold storage warehouse. Warehouse keeper, everyone. Seeks your guidance on GST accounts and records to be maintained. People, warehouse keeper. What does the order warehouse keeper maintain? He shall maintain records of consigner, consignee and other relevant records as told in manner prescribed. Manner prescribed is where rule number 58. Till code shall maintain books of account with respect to the period for which particulars of goods remained in. Warehouse, including particulars of dispatch, movement, receipt, and disposal. What goods came, what goods went, what goods remained, all details. Plus, owner wise, item wise details have to be maintained. Why? If officer wants to come and check so that he can check. See, shall facilitate any physical verification or inspection by the proper officer on demand. Why do you have to maintain owner wise, item wise? So that if officer comes and asks you, which is Mr. Ramka goods, you should be able to say these goods. These are the various items which he is selling and these are the goods which belongs to Mr. Ram. Are we clear everyone? Next. In the MCQs, can you read the first MCQ everyone? Please see the first MCQ and tell me everyone.
Yes, everyone. Which account? Answer A. Everyone got A. Next. Second one. Who is required to maintain records under section number 35? Every registered person, owner, operator of warehouse, transporter, all. Next. Registered person has more than one place of business situated within a state. The books of accounts shall be maintained at each place pertaining to such place. Any place of business at only principal place, any of the above. You should maintain accounts at each place of business. What are the consequences if taxable person, taxable goods are found at other place other than declared without valid document? Listen, this is not my go down. I kept my goods at somebody's place and my goods are found there. What will the officer say? He will say, Ramesh, you have not stored there. You have supplied the goods and you have to go ahead and pay the tax. It says, PO shall determine the amount of tax payable on such goods. Remember this point. Next. Can a transporter who is registered in more than one state or UT having the same PAN apply for, okay, this point you can cut it, everyone, not required. Unique common enrollment number, not required. You can cut it. Agent, we are already done. Works contractor, I have told you. Here, can you tell me this question to answer? How many months? If your case is under investigation, then 72 months from the due date of furnishing the annual return or one year after the final disposal. Which is your answer? C. Is the point clear to all? People, I have given all the answers also over here. Congratulations, people. This was an end to your short and sweet chapter. Three to four marks they ask in the exam. I think, in my opinion, three to four marks you can do the chart properly. See the question answers and MCQ should be good enough. Are we clear, everyone? Chalo. I'll go ahead and close my discussion on the chapter of accounts and records. Congratulations, people. Done.